We had a, an, an introduction for this. Uh, is it, the mic's working? All? Okay. Uh, this is a really uh, strange place for two old punks to end up, I have to say. <laughs> Time center in New York City. Um, I'd like to uh, start with a, with a couple of comments, I think. Uh, one is the project we're going to talk about, the project speaks for itself, which is why we've come with lots of images. We could just probably sit here and just click through, and if I could resist, I wouldn't say anything, and if Angela could resist, she wouldn't say anything. Um, but uh, I, think, uh, I think we have to talk about the fact that this, this project was won in an international competition. We'll talk about that a little bit. Um, but that international competition was really uh, framed by Montreal trying to, I think, recalibrate, reframe it, its histories. And, uh, and so we're really proud of being at that moment in the, at the beginning of, I think the beginning. Uh, th th there might have been some in insurgency before that. But I think at the beginning of a city that's trying to broaden its stories around, around justice, around inclusion, around, around those strategies. So if this works, it does work. We don't talk about this project ever without talking about the team. The second name there is Patricia Lucier. She's a landscape architect at LeMay. She's a design principal. And, and if there's a three-headed monster that helped create this competition, it was myself, Angela, and Patricia. Uh, so if there was a third chair here, she'd be here for sure. Um, the rest of the team we talk about in many, many ways. We've got many of our teams from LeMay here. We did the planes, trains, and automobiles. Actually, it wasn't the plane, it was the planes, buses, and automobiles, I think. Uh, so thank you, those of you that are here, and some of the members of the team are here. Um, but it was a transdisciplinary team, and the transdisciplinary nature of the project is, is, is absolutely at its heart. Um, and. Uh, so that has to be sort of uh, when, when, when we were introduced, there was a mention of field work. Field work is our research and innovation wing. And Place de Montreal A's, the methodologies we put in place in Place de Montreal A's by opening up not just to LeMay's team, but to broader teams, to Angela's atelier, and working across these disciplines and actually creating very, very inclusive strategies. That really was uh, sort of the beginning, really, of field work in that sense. And, uh, and we'll just keep going from there anyway. Those of you who've seen us speak before know that we tend to go long. We do have a very large clock here, so we know if we're going long. So uh, I guess um, we could start by looking at this image and um, thinking about this image as we move forward through the whole presentation, because it's really talking about uh, the memorial landscape or the commemorative landscape. And all of our cities in North America have these things. And if you think about it, this is Jean Cabot at Cabot Square in Montreal. And um, he's probably 30 feet t uh, high. And it's sort of um, what we call the bronze um, uh, ceiling. And it's sort of a play on the glass ceiling. So all of our cities in North America have these, um, if you look around the city, these commemorative uh, landscapes that really reflect men but do not reflect women. And so it's a really sort of asymmetrical way to uh, envision cities. And so this project is really reversing this radically. And the two-acre site at Place Montrelais uh, Champ de Mars um, is doing that and rewriting the narrative of the city to include women. So I'm just going back to Cabot Square and thinking about the urban landscape and thinking about creating art out in the open and not in sort of the four walls and not protected, but really looking at where you uh, put your art and putting it out in the urban landscape. So this is in Montreal in 2009, and I think it really sort of, it, it's sort of a beautiful way to think about how I ended up working with Place de Montreal A's and working with LeMay and working with Andrew and the whole team. And then this is at Dumbo, um, working with a portable electronic message board and rewriting the sort of the text of the city and subversively um, 
inserting myself into the city, and this is at the DAC under the Brooklyn Bridge uh, in Dumbo in 2009. So it's a nice way to sort of go back into the city. So this project is about 21 women, symbolically, seven city builders, and then 14 women of the Polytechnique Massacre. So as women have been erased, this project writes and inscribes women into the surface of the city. The, comp the project, so, sorry, did you want to? I was just going to say that the 21 women were devised by the Council de Montrealais, which is a feminist group in Montreal. And so it wasn't selected by us, these 21 women, to symbolically represent the women of Montreal. It was actually the, this feminist organization that brought this forward to the mayor's office. Sorry. The beginning of the process was uh, a two-phase competition. These are the two panels from the second phase. Uh, it was international competition, uh, so we were surprised, our team, our local team, our local Montreal team, to be selected for the, the second phase, and we were chuffed, and, and uh, it gave cause for celebration. But we really did focus on a project that we felt needed to have a, a singular projection of an idea, and needed to be really radically inclusive. And we maintained a series of those strong ideas, even though there was some resistance when we, when we had to be more strategic in the second phase around uh, some more standardized urban design strategies or some more, I would say, episodic ideas about, about how the projects should merge. And we really stuck to our guns and said, well, it's really about the sort of research, it's about Angela's research coming to bear with the design research and the landscape research. And we put that together really in these two, these two panels. Oh, sorry. Um, so these two panels are actually, uh, the two panels were very, very prescribed, and we needed to ensure that the art strategies, the architectural strategies, and the landscape strategies were put in place, as well as an understanding of the urban conditions of Montreal. Um, very rigorous. Uh, we, we, we pushed the project forward using Angela's, Angela's performance art strategies, even in the, in the presentation for the second phase of the project. The context is Montreal. This is a Montreal heat island, actually pertinent to the conversation, the last conversation that was on the board. But Montreal, uh, not just Montreal proper, not just Greater Montreal, but really this, the heart, the center of Montreal. This is a, a map of old Montreal, and our site is really just to the north of, 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 of the center of that. And really, at the heart of this project is, you know, we talk about inclusivity, we talk about a new uh, a, a, a justice, we talk about inclusion, but really it's also about repairing the city. It's about knitting together scars that, that Montreal had created for itself in that infrastructural kind of, kind of uh, extravaganza that happened in the 60s. This is the, the, the Ville Marie Expressway, which is essentially was a, a sort of crevasse cut into the city that eventually ended up getting covered over by a series of projects, a series of architectural projects. And in this case, a couple of very large ones, uh, the Shum uh, major, ho ma major Hospital, um, the uh, Palais de Congrès, a whole series of architectural elements have sort of worked their way to start covering this Ville-Marie Expressway, which is essentially sits, if you don't Montreal, sits a little bit below, well, a full story below grade through the center of the city. Place de Montreal is, is almost the final. There's another site left, but almost the final covering. And it actually occurs in a really interesting location uh, around sort of some of the major, major, major elements of the city, but it's also very much at the center of the city. It's, it's, uh, it's next to the city hall. It actually, you see from the city hall, you see it from Champ de Mars, you see it from these major infrastructural elements. So we're changing the center of the city. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the architectural components. Um, the architecture is really, the primary idea is that there's a, 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 an inclined plane, a major architectural element that moves across the site and moves across covering the Ville Maria uh, crevasse and then bridges itself to the landscape element that, that's, in front of the, uh, that's in front of the city hall, that's in front of the Hotel de Ville in Montreal. That primary element is this architectural construct. It pushes itself, 
it leans into the, into the ground as it pushes to the north and then pushes itself forward and becomes the tip of a bridge. But it's not just a bridge or a passerelle, which was the infrastructural mandate. It's actually a meadow, a, 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 a pre fleuri. It's, it's, it's got a, a four, in the initial concept, it had 400 perforations in which uh, a grass meadow uh, it emerged out of. And that grass meadow ended up having a whole series of, of, uh, of metaphorical uh, uh, sort of powers a metaphorical sort of importance for the projects itself. This is an early sketch with that now the current articulation of the site overlaid. But this idea that there is a, 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 a sequence of events as you move across the site and move towards from the from pretty much the center of downtown, a major uh, a fulcrum between the hospitals, and you end up at City Hall is is the key idea. This is one of the key images that that shows you the. The, the sort of uh, passage that you move, you move through the site, you can move up a series of stairs which become one of our key moments of commemoration or you can switch back into the meadow and you move up closer to the, uh, the, the landscape of the site. The architectural elements as they exist, it, 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 engross, it, it entails a, uh, a, 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 an existing uh, uh, metro station and, a, and an existing piece of, of uh, historic uh, art glass. So as the 21 women were selected by the Council de Montrealais, we decided um, to symbolically represent them as um, 21 flowers or plants to 21 women. So really tie this idea of women and horticulture and, and think about this as um, a pollinator garden and sort of healing again the, the sort of the, the heat of this um, the heat city, the sort of the, the toughness of this site. And so, and it's not sort of, the narrative doesn't start, it goes all year. So there's a winter garden, there's a summer garden, there are four seasons and really representing the four seasons uh, for the 21 women. So that, that was sort of the, the, the jury said that this particular gesture was the, the engine of the project this pure perennial field. So as we've said, it's not just us. We've, we've got so many different people and this is sort of why this project to us is so special in that we have, there's art, architecture, landscape, engineering, and it is all very seamlessly cohered together and amalgamated. And in this final image, this is the winter, the winter scene. There's, there's, there's the remnants of the, the meadow itself that exists, but then also the snow appears. And some of the renderings that we were asked to make really talk about the idea of the winter city, the fact that this winter city can be as inclusive as possible. So this notion that if you understand the, 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 the project fulsomely, if you understand that there's a metaphoric quality to the 21 plants, or whether you don't, whether you just imagine that you can move through this thing every week or every day or every two months, and, and you're, you're, you're immersed in a completely different experience at e each time of the year is important. The site itself, we, we, we've spoken about. Um, this is, a, this is a, a view looking down, actually, from the rooftop of, of City Hall, looking down on the site. And right now, it's a construction site. The site is under construction. Um, oh, and it becomes a video. It does work. This is the French la place content. La Montréalaise est située mm -hmm. aux abords de la station Champ de Mars, près de l'hôtel de ville. Elle est à la fois une porte d'entrée du vieux Montréal et un lieu de passage important des résidents des travailleurs du quartier et des touristes. La place des Montréalaises s'insère dans une vision plus large de réaménagement. Le projet urbain secteur Champ de Mars qui vise à retisser des liens entre le centre-ville et la ville ancienne. Le concept de lauréat pour l'aménagement de la place des Montréalaises est issu d'un concours international d'architecture de paysages pluridisciplinaires lancé par la Ville de Montréal en 2017. Les avantages d'un tel concours, c'est vraiment son aspect international. Euh, ça permet à des équipes provenant de plusieurs disciplines de réfléchir l'avenir d'un secteur spécifique de Montréal. Donc, ça a suscité beaucoup de créativité. La proposition de l'OMIS s'est démarquée des autres par, euh, je dirais en premier lieu, son plan incliné. Ce plan incliné est important parce qu'il permet en fait de réparer cette cicatrice-là qui était laissée par l'autoroute Ville-Marie depuis sa construction, qui permet de raccorder en fait le centre-ville à la cité administrative de la ville. 
So for me, one of the most powerful things about it, it's sort of embedded in this model, and it's the, it's the complete transdisciplinary nature of, of the project. We seamlessly work between architecture, landscape architecture, art. Le projet propose une riche expérience d'immersion. Un plan incliné s'élève vers le sud pour rejoindre la cité administrative. Il offre de nombreux points de vue sur la ville. Le pré fleuri aménagé sur cette pente deviendra un bouquet de fleurs offert en hommage aux femmes ayant marqué l'histoire montréalaise. La commémoration des femmes est au cœur des aménagements. C'est le thème unificateur pour l'ensemble du projet. What I brought to the table was the idea of the steps, which is the commemoration of the names inscribed physically on the risers of the steps. Près du métro, un nouvel environnement se dessine. C'est la forêt qui définit l'entrée de la place et la verrière de Marcel Ferron est mise en valeur. Quand l'usager sort du métro, euh, on est directement dans la forêt. Et nous, on a vraiment créé une illusion d'unir la station de métro à la cité administrative. C'est un concept préliminaire. On est à la première étape et euh, ça va être évolutif dans le temps. Donc, les Montréalais et Montréalaises vont l'avoir euh, évolué avec eux au cours des années. La nouvelle place des Montréalaises transformera le paysage urbain du secteur Champ de Mars. Uh, the date's a bit optimistic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I guess, you know, COVID happened. I think that's what we, we should all have tattoos, I guess, to say COVID happened. But uh, the project is in the ground right now and the infrastructural elements are in place. We're going to go, go th quickly through these are the sort of commemoration components in the early competition phase, and we'll talk about a revision to this slide. And this is really just a model that sort of shows these components that we're going to talk about now as we move through. So uh, when I was speaking, I was talking about the stairs, and what happens in a project, of course, is that things change radically. So uh, initially, we had thought about these women as with their names and sort of veering away from having them being commemorated through their bodies, which is just um, uh, it's a it's a pitfall, it's a minefield. You just, uh, for me, I just, because there are so many women from different eras and ages and times, um, to sort of, to represent them and their body would be um, just very difficult. So I chose to think about them as women, as names, their, their names and really thinking about the idea of text and, and inscription on the landscape. So this is uh, Jean Mons, who uh, founded, co-founded Montreal and only now has gotten recognition. And then thinking about, uh, like we were talking about the LeMay team and everyone who worked on this and made this happen and the city of Montreal and the Council de Montrealais. I mean, it's such a, uh, it's a civic project. It feels like so many, different people working on this, and then thinking about the, the suffragettes, and then how this is all being built on their work, and on their sort of, and what they were doing, and these are from Montreal, these are Montreal suffragettes, and the history of that particular to Montreal. And again, thinking about, as I, I'm doing my PhD on this actual project, and really thinking about, well, who are the women of Montreal? It's become deeply philosophical for me to think about that and what they represent. And Adola Saint-Jean is also one of the women represented, and she was sort of a shock suffragette, they called her. So she worked for 40 years, actually, to, get, to gain the vote. And in Quebec, uh, women were the last to vote provincially. So it's got a very special meaning. Uh, to think about that uh, in Montreal. This is the site itself before the construction. It's a, it's a big hole right now, and that's the uh, uh, that's a, a, a being renovated city hall within within Montreal. It is a kind of field within the center of the city. The components themselves were seen as a, as, a, as as the landscape, the the pre fleuri, and then a forest of memory. You'll see the green, the the the, the second image moving up, and then the existing 
Champ de Mars uh, metro station with the Marcel Ferrand glass, which was spoken about in the window, and then, and then a series of objects. The found objects, which is the Marcel Ferrand, the transformed object, which we'll talk about, the, an architectural component that sort of transforms an existing building, and then the new stair, which was a new object. The Marcel Ferrand glass is very important. It's a, it's, it's a part of the modernist uh, uh, art history of Montreal, but it's also authored by a, by a woman, and it's, it's being maintained as, as a significant found object of the project, that it's something that's experienced as you move up. You have the opportunity to move up into the site and see through this glass. Then there's the composition, the idea that there's a series of borders or, or boundaries to the site, that each of them can transgress themselves to the other components of the site in different ways. And then the, the fact that the site is actually a linkages of a series of other public spaces, Place Viget, Champ de Mars, really important public civic places. And th this site, this project becomes a bridge linking those in a very important way. And they, sorry, and they call that sort of a necklace or, or a rosary connecting the city, these green, the green lungs of the city of Montreal. There are the significant infrastructural components of the site, the subway station, the Ville Marie, and then the on-ramp and then how those th components, those three found architectural components are composed and then how they split up and become defined. And we really did see these as, as integrated but started to develop these individually in, in this intense sort of site sectional condition that was really, really important to consider. And again, the overall view of saying how the commemoration, the memory of the women is embedded in the architecture, it's embedded in the landscape, it's embedded in these moments. A fairly in-depth programmatic, so this also gives back civically to the site. Uh, so there's various elements and, and what they mean. Some of this has changed over time. And then different sizes of public spaces that can be used in different ways over the course of the history of the site, and it's, a, and, and it's important. So it gives back on many levels. It gives back to the hospital district, which surrounds it. It gives back in many, many different ways. The view across the meadow back to the Marcel Ferrand glass, the view looking, looking across the Marcel Ferrand glass, uh, or the view of it, looking into the space. These are the images from the competition entry. This memory, this memory of, of, of uh, uh, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, this, this, this the projected memory uh, component of the site, and how that's embedded in these landscape elements within the site. And really then the articulation of this as we, as we move forward with, with uh, the transformation, essentially a, a 22 meter by four meter high on each side, stainless steel, sort of projection onto the site. The bridge that moves across and looks up to the Schum and the Schum Passerelle, which is a major piece of urban jewelry on the site, and then the views back to, uh, back to the, the various components, the view back to the Schum, the hospital, and then the view across the city at night. And then again, a more abstracted view of the perforations, the 400 perforations that sort of push the garden through, the staircase itself, which has now been abstracted in a slightly different way, and then the overall view of the site. So it's important uh, as, a, as a component that gives back to the city that you can ex exist within this garden at a very haptic level, but then you exist also within the broader context of the city. The fact that it gives back in many, many different scales. So really thinking, and I've talked about this, uh, talking about inscription and text and the city as text, the urban, and who writes, who writes the city, who is writing on the civic space and uh, and that's those few images were from Rome, and Rome does that so well of really sort of inscribing itself so uh, openly. And then looking at this idea of the text and the women who have written, and then incorporating those quotes into the site. So we can just move forward. We have barely any time, Andrew. This is, um, if we go back, can you go back for a second? Sorry. That's the Montreal mirror, like a, it's a, sort of a conceptual idea of how to inscribe these women onto this space. And then, so it went from the stairs that I talked about to this whole gesture of uh, um, the Montreal mirror that we're, women are reflected in the mirror with their names, but you're ref they're reflected back within them and then out. And then at night, if you can go to the next one, it's highly polished stainless steel. So there's this lovely, lovely triple screen of sort of the screen of the city with the women and then the backdrop of the city. Another conceptual model, and Marie-Joseph Angelique, which I didn't really talk about, uh, she's part of this um, and it started in this way. Athel Cooper is a contemporary African-American writer and she gifted a quote f 
for, to honor Marie Joseph Angelique. And so we've engraved a quote of hers. And so her voice is really the only living voice on, of, of these women, which is. These are the images of the, of the mirrored surface, the major moment of commemoration that's not embedded in the landscape, that sort of object of commemoration, and at night, the night view. And then in the end, this is how the commemoration has, 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 has resolved itself, the Marcel Ferrand, the, the object, the mirrored object, and then the staircase. And then the architecture coming back to that idea of the lifted plane, there's a column that sits within the landscape and pushes that, that column forward with a perforation. Again, the much broader view of the project as it exists, as it, as it existed in the competition phase, and then the, as it exists now, the, the project has been resolved, it's changed a little bit, it's had some value engineering, but fundamentally it still exists within the context of the much broader city. Thank you. Thank you. Those of, you, those of you doubters, we only went two and a half minutes over. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you, Angela and Andrew. That gave us so much to think about and act upon. Uh, now, we're going to take a short break. Roll up your sleeves, and now it's time to meet one another, and I'm going to come out and meet you too, because I feel very formal. I'd like to see your lovely faces in person. The Resonance Lounge is open in the lobby, and you have until 3.10 to caffeinate and connect. If you want to watch the virtual session over the break, you can open the World City app, and you can join Patrick Schumacher of Zaha Hadid Architects and Harman Van Sprang, CEO of Sharing Cities Alliance, as they introduce the concept of self-governed cities in the metaverse. We'll see you back here on the New York stage at 3.10. Thank you. <laughs>